Hi there, in this video we're going to derive the explicit form of the least squared estimators, or at least we're going to start to, when we're thinking about the matrix form of econometrics. So let's just remind ourselves what a least squared estimator actually does. So the idea here is that you have some independent variable x and we were trying to predict some dependent variable y. So this is just a bivariate model where I've just got one independent variable x causing a variable y. And the idea here is that you have a whole set of observations. And if we were trying to fit a sort of linear line to that data, the idea would be that we were choosing the y-intercept, so that's this sort of value here, together with the slope of that line, which is a sort of m in our sort of y, y equals mx plus c notation. And we were choosing those parameters in order to minimize the sum of square distances or square vertical distances of each point from that line. And the reason we considered vertical distances opposed to horizontal distances is that we were trying to minimize our sort of sum of square prediction errors in our dependent variable. Y is, after all, the thing which we're trying to predict. And we wrote out what this sort of least squared form has in our old sort of summation notation. It would just be equal to the sum from i equals 1 to n of our sort of errors squared. So if we had the sort of whole population errors, then we would sort of just use our errors squared. But the idea here is that, in fact, we use our residuals in place of the population errors because we don't actually observe them. And if we specified some sort of linear model, which was yi is equal to alpha plus beta xi plus our ui as being our population process, we can write out our sort of equivalent in the sample as being the sum from i equals 1 to n of yi minus alpha minus beta xi all squared. And the idea here is that we used alpha hat and beta hat in place of alpha and beta because the idea is that we're choosing our estimates of alpha and beta in order to minimize this sum of square errors. So alpha hat is estimating alpha and beta hat is estimating beta. So there is the idea that there is some sort of true population value of alpha and there is some population value of beta. But because we only have a sample and because we don't know the population process, the best we can do is estimate them. So the idea is that we differentiated S with respect to these two parameters, alpha hat and with respect to beta hat. And when we set those two derivatives being equal to zero, and then we could solve explicitly for the least squares estimators of alpha and beta, which we denote by alpha hat and beta hat. Okay, so that, that was how we sort of went about things when we were using the summation form of econometrics and explicitly when we are talking solely about a bivariate case. But the problem with the summation form of econometrics is that it doesn't generalize particularly well when we're thinking about the multivariate case. So that's when I have sort of more than one independent variable. So let's just remind ourselves of what the matrix form of econometrics is. The idea is that you have a sort of vector of your dependent variable being determined by a matrix of all your independent variable observations times your parameter vector beta plus your population error u. And the idea is that we don't actually observe the population error u, so in fact what we minimize is the sort of sum of square residuals. So that is why we sort of replace u by u hat, and similarly we don't observe the population vector of um, parameters beta, so we have to estimate it. So that's why we use a beta hat rather than beta. So how can we form this sum up here, but using our sort of vector notation? Well, actually, it turns out it's quite simple to write. I can actually make it by just taking my residuals, taking the transpose of that vector of my residuals, and then multiplying it by the vector of my residuals. So this, if we were sort of to write it out in explicit form, would actually be u1 all the way through to un times u1 all the way through to un. So notice here that we've got a 1 by n 
uh, row vector multiplied by an m by one column vector. So the idea here is that the inner indices cancel, and we're just left by with a one by one entity at the end of the day. So, and and that's actually what we want. We want to minimise some sort of scalar sum. So, and actually, if we were to explicitly sort of write this out, then what would the first term be? Well, it would be this sort of u1 here multiplied by the u1 here. So we'd just get u1 squared plus the second term would just be u2 squared. And then we sort of continue all the way through to un squared. So when we write it out explicitly, it's quite clear to see that this is of exactly the same form as we had in the sort of summation form of econometrics. OK, and actually one thing I should just Note it is that I should actually have hats on all of my variables because of the fact that we don't actually observe the errors in the population, we just observe our estimates of that. So the idea is that we're trying to minimise this sum of residual squared in order to derive our form of our sort of estimators for the population parameter vector beta. But the problem is at the moment is that this sum here doesn't actually explicitly contain any of our population or our estimates for the population parameters beta. So we need to sort of remedy that. And that's, again, not difficult to do if we just recognize that from this relationship we have here, we can just rearrange for our residuals being equal to our vector of dependent variables y minus x times beta hat. And if we then substitute this form into our form which we had down here for our sum of residual squared, then we can do that quite easily. We just get y minus x beta hat, all transposed, times y minus x beta hat, all on its own. So this first term here is our sort of residual vector transposed and the second term here is just the residual vector itself. So the idea is that we're trying to choose our parameter vector beta hat in order to minimize this sort of product. In the next video we're going to continue with this derivation of the least squared estimators in matrix form. I'll see you then.